All right, so continuing on from where we left off, Mage. So Mage got some interesting tools this time around. I mean, I'll, I'll grant it it. Um, I don't think Mage overall is going to be like one of the top tier decks, but it's going to have, and probably be mid tier if I had to guess, because they have some really interesting ones. Caligos, 10 mana, 412. So of course, 10 mana, if you play him on turn 10, he's got to have something strong to do. He does. Your first spell each turn costs zero. So each turn that you get, any spells in your hand, the first one is going to be zero. So not only that, Battle Cry, discover a spell. So when you just, of course, you plop him down, you'll be able to play a spell on top of him and you discover a spell. So if you don't have a spell in your hand, that'd be good. You might be able to discover something that saves your behind. Overall, he's he's a great minion. Um, wish he was in a in priest or something. That would be awesome. But, you know, he's a mage. Mage is losing. Let's take a look at those. So the one thing about mage is they're going to be losing some one of the main things that kept them around forever. Um, let's see. So one, open the way gate. No more worrying about time warp and having them uh, one turn kill you. But have, well, technically two turns as they get a second one. Archaeologist was good. Cast, you know, be able to bring out a secret. Primordial Glyph was good. Pyros was all right in different ones. Molten Reflections was good with the open the way gate. Um, Meteor is gone. Von Goro. Frozen Throne. So this is some of the big ones. So, yeah, Simulacrum was good for the open the way gate. Biggest one is Frotch Lich Jaina. It's gone. So, no more worrying about getting those water elementals or, of course, Syndragosa on top of it. Getting water elementals from killing the actual frozen champion and getting the legendary from it. It's gone. So, the I guess one of the best ways for Mage to get into the late game and having these long games is when they able to bring out water elementals and just doing the math of course a lot of mage players is just sitting there doing the math about okay how am i going to get my minion to do this to get him low in health to kind of get him to redo bring me another water elementals because if you didn't make, create water elementals then you would in the long run and they lose the game but the fact that all these water i'm oh, sorry just elementals in general have life steal so that kept all these mages alive up until the end game. It's gone now. So mage is going to be looking for a different game plan. Uh, finally from Cobalts. We're losing. Uh, let's see here. Explosive runes was really good for the aggro aspect of it. Uh, Arcane Artificer was good in order to get armor from the different spells. All the memers out there is going to definitely be losing Deck of Wonders. Honestly, the fact Deck of Wonders is gone is actually saddening with the fact that it would bring hilarious things I would love to see on the internet. Dragon's Fury is gone. Alan, now this one was interesting is the fact that it would actually bring you a draw engine. And no one really played Dragon Call Arlena. Although... You would always have to worry when you're playing against Frotchlet Jaina if they did have a uh, the Dragon Caller in their deck because here you are like, all right, I'm about to win. And then all of a sudden they drop this down and you're like, dang it, there goes all my removal. So it's always a mind games whether or not if they had that in their deck or not. So Mage itself is losing some of the things that kept it alive or even the uh, aggro part with explosive runes is it's gone it's going away so what we have in place caligos good card i can see that being played in every uh mage deck honestly because of how good he is the fact that he discovers a spell on top of that spell will be zero come on now he's good in and of himself cadgar two mana two two cadgar is 
not a hero on this aspect, but basically a legendary. Your cards that summon minions summon twice as many. So he's two mana. He's going to be flexible. He's going to be used in a lot of things. And especially not only in this expansion, but in any future expansions. So I'm sure Blizzard's going to have to worry about the fact that if they make if they make cards that summon other cards, is it going to be a worry in Mage? So I can see them testing a lot of different things as time goes on. Uh, eight mana, Power of Creation. Discover a six cost minion, summon two copies of it. So guess what? You're summoning two creatures from Power of Creation. You're going to summon four if you have Cadgar on there. And it's going to be four six cost minions. Um, of course, this is why they had to make it eight cost because of these two added together. Um, I guess a good catch up mechanic with the fact that you just made four six cost minions. It just all depends on what those six cost minions are. Uh, mana Cyclone, two mana, two, two. Battle cry for each spell you've cast this turn at a random mage spell to your hand. So this could be a good catch-up mechanic whenever you're playing a lot of cheap spells. And that's what you want to do because these two mana, you definitely want to play cheap spells or anything that, you know, you have sources or printers on that's made it cheaper. Play this guy, get all those spells back in your hand. Be careful not to overdraw your hand, though. All right, four mana, three, three. Kieran, oh, sorry. Kieran Tor Tricaster. 4 mana, 3, 3, spell damage plus 3, but your spells cost one more. Plus 3 is nothing to scoff at. I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, here you have Fireball that costs 9. I mean, or any of the minions or any of the cheap spells that, of course, will actually fire more. The key is those cheap spells end up being one more. So with the fact they're costing 2, I ain't gonna really think about having this one in your deck. The fact that it costs four, and then because it costs four, you're playing one more. Like you're for all your spells in your hand that you want to play because they have plus spell damage, but because it costs one more, your spells are gonna have to be super cheap. Of course, the one drops or one cost spells and such. Yeah. The drawback is all your spells cost one more. So things like magic trick or that don't, it's not actually an attacking spell. They also cost one more. So that's going to be the downside of it. I see it being experimented with, but overall probably not played in like mainstream mage decks because they're already going to have, I mean, you're going to have source of apprentice so you can play those cheap spells for zero, let alone costing one more. At most, I see maybe one of these ran in a deck. Maybe not not two. Not at the moment. Maybe they print something in the future that's like super strong and super cheap at the same time. But right now, I see this as dust. Three mana, Conjurer's Calling, Twin Spell, Destroy a Minion. Summon two minions of the same cost to replace it. So, good thing here. Guess what? We have Cadgar. Destroy something, get two minions. Guess what? You get four minions that cost the same of what you had before. So the fact both of these are cheap, that's five. That's five costs. The only drawback, of course, this is you're killing something. So hopefully it's already damaged or sorry to begin with. So then that way you can, but come on now, summoning four of something. That's pretty good. If anything. One mana magic trick. Discover a spell that costs three or less. So I can see magic trick being ran in, in decks with the fact that it's another way of getting cheap spells in. Um, so the fact that it's kind of like um, Shadow Visions from Priest. So it was two costs to just kind of pull a copy of something from your deck. So, of course, you always wanted that in every single priest because, hey, I want cards that's in my deck and get more and more copies of those things. So, mage is a little different. If you don't have the spells that you want, you can discover 
another spell that's a cheap one. Whether it's, you know, to protect you or do damage, destroy things, frostbolt, whatever. And, you know, you get Caligos. Just a way to get more and more and more and more spells. And the fact that you play a magic trick and then Mana Cyclone pushes it out, so. Yeah. It's going to be played. The art is a little weird, though. Of course, we can see what magic trick he's doing, but we can see the finger there. So it's kind of like, yeah, that trick is played out. Next, Messenger Raven. Three mana, three, two, beast. Battle cry, discover a mage minion. The key is mage minion. We got all this stuff that's up here saying about mage spells. Then this guy's requesting help from the invasion by hey, looking for a mage minion. Now, granted, hey, that also means mage legendaries. So stuff like Caligos, Cadgar. For example, Cadgar dies and you can get another Cadgar from Messenger Raven. Then, you know, you lucked out. It's great. The biggest thing is what helps is it's Discover. You'll notice that a lot of this stuff says Discover. That's because Blizzard found out Discover is a great way for randomness. Instead of just being everything random. How about you have a random, but you choose that random. So, works in your favor. So that's why I almost... More and more and more and more and more cards are saying Discover. Because the community said, hey, we like Discover. And Blizzard's like, fine, we'll give it to you. So, Messenger Raven. I, I see this as a regular staple um, to get more and more minions, you know, and the off chance to get in legendaries. Because you got to remember, you got a higher chance of getting um, mage minions than you are uh neutral minions so and you know they also have legendaries in that mix but then you have things like magic dart frog and kieran tor tricaster but it's discover so you get a choice here so it's not too bad oh and i retract the whole thing i was saying about the neutrals because it does say you discover a mage minion so take that back but that's even better with the fact that you can discover the mage minions and you have a choice of three so, easier way of finding what you need or what you want. Next, 2 mana 1 3, Magic Dart Frog. After you cast a spell, deal 1 damage to a random enemy minion. Key, it, it says enemy minion. So, of course, no minions on the board. You only got the character, so it won't attack that. Um, It's going to be good as far as the 2 cost. And it's cheap. And it gets, you know, the fact that it deals one damage here and there. You deal one damage to something, it is one attack. You can kind of follow up and clear out things. I see this as almost... I wouldn't say every mage deck because, be, I mean, more than likely it will. But the key is, to begin with, how many different mage decks are we really making here? We're making like a, what, spell maybe mid-range type mage here so it's gonna be in there and then finally ray of frost one mana twin spell freeze a minion if it's that keyword minion if it's already frozen deal two damage to it so it's flexible it's twin spell you play it once you freeze it play it again you deal damage to something and of course, if something's already frozen, you do damage. So it's a guarantee two damage to something for two mana. It's all right. It's flexible. And uh, technically, it's more damage than uh, doing your hero power for two mana. So overall, mage, um, they got something interesting. I'll admit... Caligos is like the number one MVP of Mage bringing it back because the fact that it here you're going to have these spells, they're going to be free. And even if your hand has no spells, you can discover a spell. And guess what? It's free. So Caligos single handedly saves Mage out of this expansion because he's so, I mean, he's strong, but he's not overpowered. He's like, what a. Legendary should be. 
And Kadgar, you know, Kadgar is, he's not only going to be in it for the memes, but honestly, I think every mage deck's going to have Kadgar that's going to have some type of uh, summoning to it as well. And, of course, if you have minions that summon uh, different things. So, yeah. Overall, Mage is kind of middle of the road, this expansion. But they got some tools, you know, we got to remember, this is the start of a new year uh, for Year of the Dragon. So, we'll see how Mage does in the future. All right, Paladin. So, bundled Paladin, they kind of gave a dragon package and a secret package with. So, the fact that in the past, Dragon Paladin absolutely was atrocious. They've tried so hard to make Dragon Paladin work, and it just would not work. So, now... There's a possibility that Dragon Paladin may actually work. So this is actually pretty interesting. As long as you have dragons in your hand. All right. First legendary, 10 mana 412, which you'll see this kind of theme of 412 and all in basically all our, well, not all, but most of the dragons. Nazari, battle cry, restore health. I'm oh, sorry, restore both heroes to full health. So... Of course, let's go back into here and we look in Paladin and off the back, I think everyone's like idea came into play of using to call high priest, uh, sorry, Thekel with that because of course he's going to convert all your health to armor, place that, guess what, you went, you have, let's say you're at full health at 30, you play this, you're going to have 29 armor get full healed so you have what 50 yeah 59 health almost 60 i mean priest who could only go up to 40 when you have uh the quest applied to it so you know the problem is getting that combo together Eh. so let's take a look at the cards that they're going to be losing as far as paladin so starting with ungoro didn't really play adaptation. Lost in the Jungle is good as far as dude, uh, dude Paladin. Getting more and more dudes out. <sighs> Poor Gal Galvadon. Anyway, Hydrologist. Great card. I mean, the fact that it could discover a secret. What You didn't even play a secret Paladin. And the fact that you can discover a secret. It didn't care that he was a Murloc. He was a really great, great card. Spike Ridge Steed is going bye-bye. No more worrying about that. Sunkeeper Tarum. Bye-bye. Vine Cleaver was good for uh, Dude Paladin. It's gone. Frozen Throne. We say goodbye to Righteous Protector, which has played a whole lot. Uh, don't even worry about the others. Bolvar. Eh. Biggest one's probably Righteous Protector and uh, Uther of the Gebbin Blade. Oh, sorry, Evan played. He's going by, so no more um, one turn killing, bringing things out. It's gone. And uh, I mean, honestly, the fact that all these classes are losing their hero class, some are getting hit harder than others, but that means it's a whole nother meta, a whole nother change. I mean, the late game is going to be changing for a lot of these classes because they no longer have their hero class cards. So. I think I enjoy it. It's going to be a new meta. It's going to be something absolutely different. And what? Maybe a month and a half or from now, then we'll probably have an established meta where it'll get boring again. But hey, at least it'd be interesting until we get there. Uh, and finally, from Cobalts, they didn't even play the Spellstone. Uh, unidentified Maul every now and then. Call to Arms, that's a big one. They've already hit that with a Nerf Hammer and it's gone. Um, level Up uh, level up was Nerf. And Miss Sun Sorrow was... I mean, he was she was played... I saw her played more towards the end. 
with the fact that she'll be able to get all these buffs from uh, Spike Ridge Steed and anything else. Uh, especially playing Priest, I would have to... I, the way I got rid of her was basically sick of screaming and see all the paladins cry. Lovely tears. Anyway. So, we will go back to... Let's go back to what we were looking at. New cards then. Nazari, good. Gonna be played. Three mana, four, three. Commander Risa. Your secrets trigger twice. So it's three mana. And Paladin Secrets costs one mana. I mean. Yeah, I mean, she'll be played in Secret Paladin. So if you're playing Secret Paladin, you play her. I'm sure she'll be played a whole lot during Wild, but is Secret Paladin going to be good? That's the question. And from the preliminary stuff, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be tested, but for right now, eh. Dragon Speaker, 5 mana, 3, 5. Now, here's where we're going to get more into the dragon aspect. So, with Dragon Speaker, give all dragons in your hand plus 3, plus 3. Now, dragons already want to stay in your hand with the fact that they kind of buff each other. Saying that, hey, if you have a dragon in your hand, this happens. So, giving them plus three, plus three. Very nice. And uh, he's going to be played in every dragon paladin. So, that help, that's one key thing that helps dragon paladin. Next is duel, five mana. Summon a minion from each player's deck. They attack each other. Dust. That is what this card says. Dust me. Yeah, takes a minion. They fight each other from their deck. Moving on. Um, Tall to Adventure, three mana. Draw the lowest cost minion from your deck. Give it plus two, plus two. From the start, I don't think this is going to be a good card. But in the future, as we start getting the meta established, and there might have some, if you're trying to, Basically, uh, I believe the term is tutor out a uh, low cost minion and buff it. I can see that being played, but you got to remember this is kind of slow in the aspect you're playing three mana. Yes, you're drawing the card from your deck, which key is it says lowest cost. So it's always going to draw a minion from your deck, regardless of the level. And it's going to give it plus two, plus two. Draw so this is a card that really will be only good in the mid to late game where you you can afford to pay the three mana, but on turn three, unless you have some combo thing going on, then it wouldn't be good. But late game, if you there's really some minions you're trying to pull, this would be good to, to pull those minions into your hand, it just costs a lot. All right, two mana, two, two. Mysterious Blade. Battle Cry, if you control a secret game, plus one attack. So if you've already had a turn one, play the secret. Turn two, play this. It's a two mana, three, two attack. Now, granted, I would not suggest doing that. I mean, I guess if you don't have any minions in your hand, but if you're playing a secret and then you're following up by playing a weapon, it'd be a lot better to have a minion on the field or hero powering. Yes, please. What? Turn one, do a secret. Turn two, hero power. Turn three, this and something else to follow up on the hero power at least. All right. Desperate measures. One mana twin spell. Cast a random paladin secret. So. Key is this twin spell. So, of course, you're going to... I mean, it's going to be random. So instead of you playing a, a secret, the key is it plays a random one. Most of the time it may help be helpful because it's going to be the mind games is the best way of saying it between you and your the person you're playing uh, against because it's random. A lot of times when you play a secret, the opponent can kind of read what you're doing and kind of know what the secret is. But... With this, it's just a totally random secret, so you have no clue, except for testing. 
And let's see, one of the best cards out of their area is going to be 3 mana 3 2 Bronze Herald. Death Rattle at 2. 4 4 dragons to your hand. So you're playing one card that gives you two cards. Guaranteed in almost every Paladin deck. I mean, I'll be honest, even if you weren't playing Dragon, the fact that it gives you, it plays a three cost, is a three cost that, okay, opponent kills it. Turn four, you can play one of the four Dragons that you have. Come on now. All right. Next, Lightforge Blessing, two mana, twin spell. Give a friendly minion lifesteal. So 